Hey Alexa, order a hairbrush. Amazon's choice for hairbrush is Conair hairbrush. It's $7.48 total including tax. Would you like to buy it? Hey Google, order a hairbrush. Okay, here's something from Walmart on Google Express. I can get Goody Detangle and hairbrush for $5.48. Would you like to order that? As you can probably tell, uh, today we're talking about smart speakers. Smart speakers uh, like the Amazon Alexa and the Google Home. Um, we're one of the really hot uh, selling items this holiday season. We've got John uh, Eichmann here to kind of talk a little bit about smart speakers and you know what some of that growth means for uh, e-commerce and for consumers. So John, I know you have some facts for us. If you can give us a little bit of, of uh, what we saw this holiday season and what these, uh, these smart devices mean for uh, consumers, that'd be great. Absolutely. Well, you know, we saw a, a huge explosion in the smart speaker market. I'm, I'm sure you saw every news advertisement going into Black Friday. They were talking about Amazon slashing the price of all the Echo products. They launched what, a few, a couple of different new uh, Alexa-enabled products from the, the Dot to the, the, the Screen, the Spot. I mean, they, they've got a huge market surge. And of course, it was one of the biggest items for Black Friday. What we saw over the holiday season is we actually saw an increase of about 500,000 homes that now have smart speakers that didn't have them before the holiday season. Including both of our homes. Including both <laughs> of our homes. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Echo. Yep. Uh, we use it in our house all the time. Yep. Um, you know, that's not a product endorsement. I'm just saying I'm a big fan of them. Um, but so what we've seen from the market is pretty exciting in terms of a growth of a retail channel. Um, what we're seeing right now is that currently of all Wi-Fi enabled homes in the U.S., about 13% um, about have a smart speaker in there. And the reason that that is important is we can look back at technology adoption rates on, on new iPhones, on, on, on any kind of new technology or gadget. And there is this critical threshold of about 15% market adoption. And once it's hit that 15% marketing penetration rate, the product starts to soar. So by all estimates, uh, smart speakers should surpass that threshold mid this year. Yep. Um, and they're really not going anywhere. And these products have only been on the market for how long? Uh, let's see, Amazon uh, debuted the Echo three years ago, I think in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, Google's just come in the market over the last year. And then we actually have a new player in the market coming up starting February 9th is when it's released, the Apple uh, AirPod or HomePod is yep. what it's called. And you would imagine that most people with an Apple smartphone or an Apple TV um, are probably going to reinvest in an Apple. So you would, you may see that you, increase. You would expect to see that. You would expect to see that. Apple has um, a very dedicated user base. And in terms of the different voice um, programs that are out there, the Cortana and Alexa and Google's Assistant, um, Siri by far has the largest monthly active user base. Yep. Um, it's what people are used to. And, and people that have Apple love and breathe and love Apple. So although they're a late player to the game, they may actually make a splash. I don't know. We'll yep. have to see. Um, but some other really things that are exciting as a retail channel, um, you know, we talked about the critical threshold of the technology adoption, but what's more important is talking about how many people are actually ordering products from these devices. Currently, about 17% of all Amazon Prime users report ordering something from uh, the Alexa devices. Um, there are some fears keeping people away from this, you know, worried about what the product is going to be, maybe worried that there's going to be a miscommunication between themselves and the device. There's some comfort levels that are being mm -hmm. worked out. But 17% is nothing to shake a stick at when you're talking about all of Amazon Prime's market. And that number is expected to increase 23% over the next calendar year. Yep. So um, that really is just going to go up and, and rise. Uh, I really don't see the smart speaker market going away. And in terms of a retail channel, you really have to start thinking about how are you going to get your product placed on this? You know, it, we always talk about being omni-channel, how you have to be everywhere to be successful. If you just have a website, you're not going to be successful. You need to be on social. You need to be on YouTube. You need to be on Instagram. You need to be uh, on a, a direct to consumer ordering. You need to have uh, e-commerce set up. I mean, every channel that's available, you have to be going after because in today's market, our consumers are complex. Yep. They, they want to order how they want to order, when they want to order, 
and to capture all of your potential, you really have to be in every channel. And right now, like you were saying, um, you know, you have for the Amazon Alexa. In order to order products off of there, do you have to be on Amazon and have your products on Amazon in order to be ordered off of there? And same with Google, do you have to be on the Google Marketplace to, to get products? Right. Well, and that's that's a really interesting question. So they do have two separate marketplaces. Um, everyone that has sold on Amazon is familiar with Amazon's uh, processes. To, to get featured though, what we've found is to get featured on a voice. So let's say I say to it, hey Alexa, order a hairbrush. Well, what's Alexa gonna offer me back? What is the go-to product that she's gonna offer up? Well, what she's gonna offer up to me is going to be the Amazon Choice product for that category. Um, and now Amazon Choice is something that's caught a couple of people you know, off guard, it's caught them by surprise. And the reason being is that Amazon Choice is a program where Amazon selects your product based on a, a secret formula, a secret criteria, and you can't apply for it, you can't petition for it, you can't um, ask how close you are to getting it. Mm -hmm. But we have figured out a couple of factors that you wanna think about if you wanna get your product featured as an Amazon Voice uh, offering. Yep. Um, and one of the things you wanna do, to, the things you need to think about when trying to get featured as an Amazon Choice product is it comes down to positive product ratings, um, high sales volume, reasonable pricing for your product, uh, your product needs to be prime eligible, yep. and then favorable shipping speeds all factor into this algorithm of what product gets selected as an Amazon Choice product. The great thing about it is, is that anyone that's gotten an Amazon Choice label has said that that product has skyrocketed to their top product in terms of sales. It is a massive boon. And, and definitely worth putting the time and the investment into I know it. at IDS we've had, you know, several of our customers have gotten products that were Amazon Choice and, you know, not only does it does it help with the, the Alexa, uh, you know, that you're able to be the prime choice for any orders that are placed for, say, a hairbrush, but you're also able to be listed, you know, very high up on their search rankings and even on their home pages for a lot of, uh, um, uh, of, uh, cost, of exposure to customers. So right. that's always, I mean, getting an Amazon Choice is huge. Um, John, can you tell us, so there may be some people out there that that are anti-listing their products on Amazon or Google Marketplace, but maybe want to be able to capture some of this uh, um, the, using some of these smart speakers to sell products. Can you tell us how or if that's even possible? Well, you know, um, it is possible to get featured on both markets, but you really, these are their playground. You know, this is Amazon's playground. It's Google's playground. Yep. If you want to play, you have to play by their rules. Yep. So there, there really isn't a path for you to not be all the way in Amazon's park and then also still be featured on voice. You really need to commit to the efforts and the activities that are going to get you featured. Do you see larger companies like Best Buy and other places like that you know, creating apps, is that another way to kind of get your products right. to be able to be sold? Well, and that's, you bring up a, a really interesting point, which is a big distinction between the two different markets, uh, between Amazon's uh, environment and Google Home's environment. So the app market is a huge potential. Um, you are right, like a lot of retailers have gone ahead and partnered with one or the other. They're kind of picking their bets and hedging their bets and creating apps and partnerships for these unique chains. But I think one of the first things you need to talk about is what are the differences between the ecosystems before you decide on, on who you're gonna side with. Right now, most major retailers are signing up for deals with Google. That just tends to be the way. You've got Best Buy, Home Depot, Target, Walmart, um, but Best Buy is also with Amazon, and Amazon then also got the partnership with Microsoft, mm -hmm. um, and they've got a, a couple of other major partnerships as well. I think retailers may be scared of the competition that Amazon offers in terms of a retail competitor sure. and being so quick to jump on to sign up with them. I think it's easier for major retailers to sign up with Google when they're not in direct competition. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of markets, Amazon's got a much larger ecosystem. Um, they, Amazon came out last September and said that they hired 5,000 dedicated individuals just to work on the app market for the voice products, okay? Um, Amazon has over 25,000 apps on its market currently. Um, comparatively to Google, 
Google's only got a market of about 458 apps. What do you think about, you know, Apple's always been a leader in kind of the app marketplace in the app store. Do you see Apple coming into this and maybe being that player where they don't have a true marketplace like Amazon and Google, so maybe they could be a good alternative for people who want to sell products via a smart device but don't um, but aren't on Amazon and aren't on, on Google Marketplace, but just through their own website. Right. Um, you know, and, and we're really still kind of in the dark on that. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say, and I know a lot of the a Apple fans out there are going to kick me for this, but Apple's kind of been lagging lately in terms of, of product adoption, in terms of, of really hitting the consumer expectation mark. I mean, the, the iPhone X, they yep. just had to cut uh, production this just what this week. So... However, they always put out a rock star product and they do have that rabid fan base. Yep. So I don't know. However, um, they've been pretty hush on what they're going to do in terms of the voice enabled retail channels um, with the uh, HomePod. Yep. So we'll just have to really see how it goes. Now keep in mind right now, market penetration wise, over 70% of all, mark, all smart speakers right now are powered by Alexa. Google's lagging behind at about 20%. And there's still a, a couple of stragglers out there. there. I think Sonos has some of their own products. I know Sonos has been partnering with um, Amazon and Alexa a lot as well. But right now, the major hitter, the heavy hitter in the market is absolutely the Echo. Yep. Um, it'll be really interesting to see. You know, we'll have to get back together a year from now yep. and talk about how the market's evolved because I don't think this is going away. And it will be exciting to see how having the new Apple competition coming in the market and see how that really impacts things. Yeah, certainly. I mean, just with the way that this holiday season went, I don't think that any of these uh, smart uh, speakers are going anywhere. I think it's only going to get bigger. Um, and there's just an endless possibility of things that you can do with them. Um, anything else you want to add before we kind of wrap this up? Right. Absolutely. Well, um, as with anything, it's never going to be easy, right? So there are specific search engine optimizations, um, tricks and, and tactics that you should put into play um, when going after voice. Um, we are all really used to the, the, the fragmented three keyword, you know, kind of way. Um, voice tends to favor longer tailed keywords and more exact phrases. So you'll really want to do some research into the specifics of voice-enabled SEO in terms of your product, especially if you do have products on an Amazon marketplace or on a Google marketplace. Um, the other thing to consider, and of course this is the fulfillment company and me talking, um, but Amazon won't tell us exactly what you have to do to be an Amazon Choice product. What they will tell us though is the shipping times matter. They'll tell us that product cost matters, therefore mm -hmm. shipping cost matters. Right, And we talk about this all the time. We talk about how your choice of how you're going to do fulfillment massively impacts your product cost, massively impacts your customer satisfaction in terms of shipping and shipping satisfaction. Yep. Um, so those are definitely things you want to consider. If you're going to be looking into voice as a channel, you'll always want to be considering the, the basics as well of like making sure your shipping times are optimized, making sure your products are the right price, and that you're poised to be competitive. Yep. Well, great, John. I appreciate all the information that you were able to give us uh, today, and, and uh, hopefully some of our, our viewers out there will be able to take some of this and, and make it work for their businesses. So until right. next time.